My wife cheats with my best friend, so I tell all of our friends during a game at our next party. My wife, let's call her Amanda, and I have been together for four years. We've had our ups and downs like any couple, but we always manage to get through it. We have a great group of friends that we've known since college. Every couple of months, we get together for a game night. It's usually just an excuse to drink, laugh, and catch up. So, a couple of weeks ago, we had one of those game nights. It was at our house, and we had a bunch of people over, including my best friend, let's call him Mike. I've known Mike since high school, and we've been through thick and thin together. He's practically family. Now, I had been suspicious of Amanda for a while. I work a 9 to 5 job to support us. She had a few side hustles that she used to bring more money in for us. But recently, when I would get home, she wouldn't be there at the door excited to see me at all. That feature just kind of disappeared. I mean, I thought about her all day at work, and it was always great to see her first thing when I got there. I tried to bring it up with her, but she just brushed it off, saying she was stressed from her day and that she just needed to focus on her hustle. I wanted to believe her, but deep down, I just knew something was not right. It would have been different if the evenings had gotten any better, but those started getting cold too, if you know what I mean. Before I go on, dudes, you need to pay attention. As soon as things start getting below a certain temp in the bedroom, start looking for it, because it is coming. Anyway, a week before the game night, I accidentally stumbled upon some explicit text messages on Amanda's phone. I had gotten my work done at the office and I got to leave early as a reward, so I bounced my way home to see my wife. When I got there, she was in the shower, at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. I said hey to her and she said she had just gotten in the shower and would be a bit before she got out. So I say okay and then go and find her phone, which was on the end table next to her side of the bed. Anyway, I opened the phone and there they were, flirty messages from Mike. I was heartbroken, angry, and confused. I didn't confront either of them right away because I just didn't know what to do. I just kept reading. Apparently they had been meeting up at a few different hotels. They've even been going out for coffee together. This has all been happening while I've been at work busting my nuts to make a good life for us. I was livid. I put her phone back exactly where I found it and then left to go get some Chinese takeout for us. I sent her a text so she would know where I had gone. That's really courteous of me, isn't it? Sheesh. Anyway, I just needed some air and some time to think about all of this. The pain was almost unbearable and that got me thinking. I mean, I go to work every day and bust my balls to provide the life we always dreamed of. Then I come home and spend the evenings trying to make her laugh and taking her out to eat at nice restaurants. I rub her back and her feet while we watch movies together. I sing to her and buy her flowers every Friday on my way home from work. I mean, what in the actual hell? The more I thought, the angrier I got. So I said to myself that after all of that and she is still that heartless and would betray me like that, then she needed to pay. And as for Mike, my best friend of 13 years, well, I wanted to knock him the hell out, but I knew I needed to destroy him first. I thought, you know, if he wants to destroy my life, then I'll also destroy his. These idiots needed to feel what it was like. They needed to hurt like I was hurting. I got myself into a mode. I wore a game face for an entire week as I waited for the perfect time to bring them both down. I stopped giving her attention and stayed in the zone. It was very stressful, but I made it. So, fast forward to game night a week later. Everyone is at our house, drinks are flowing, and we're all having a great time. I kept my cool and my act up, like everything was normal. So, as we're all sitting around, our friend Simone suggests we play Never Have I Ever. You know, the game where someone says, Never Have I Ever, and then something they've never done, and anyone who has done it has to take a drink. It's usually a fun, lighthearted game, but I saw it as an opportunity for some sweet, sweet revenge. I told Simone that she should bring that up later and that it would be fun. She didn't know exactly what I meant by fun, though. So, we start off with the usual stuff. Never have I ever gone skinny dipping, never have I ever stolen anything, etc. People are laughing, drinking, and sharing stories. I'm just biding my time, waiting for the perfect moment. Finally, it's my turn. I can feel my heart pounding in my chest as I prepare to drop the bomb. I look around the room, with a big, ignorant smile on my face, making eye contact with everyone, and then I say, never have I ever slept with my best friend's wife. The room goes dead silent. People exchange awkward glances, and I can see the color drain from both Amanda and Mike's faces. I can feel my own face burning with anger, but I do my best to keep a humorous, smiling face. Everyone is waiting for someone to take a drink, but of course, no one moves. It's like time has stopped. Finally, after what feels like an eternity, I give it another go. I said, okay, maybe that one was too much. And then I let out a little laugh that I could tell made everyone a tad nervous. Here we go. Never have I ever met my husband's best friend at the Comfort Inn across town. Still, nothing. The only reaction I got were frightened stares and people looking around the room as if I was the one who had lost his mind. So I took it one step further. I continued, one more time now. Never have I ever gone and had coffee with my best friend's wife on a Thursday afternoon at the Brew Brothers Cafe. And then after coffee, went to the Drury Inn for an afternoon pounding romp and then sent messages to her later that evening saying how good of a time I had with her. All the while my best buddy was working his fucking ass off to earn a living and to take care of said wife and his continued pursuit of the promise he made when he married her. At this point, it was all too obvious. Amanda got up in tears and ran out of the room. No one else moved a muscle. 
Mike, on the other hand, looks like he's about to throw up. He doesn't take a drink. Instead, he stammers out the beginning of an apology, but nobody wants to hear it. The room is absolutely filled with gasps, shock, and disgust. As soon as he opened his stupid mouth, I'd overcross the coffee table at him. Our friends, of course, grabbed onto me, trying to control my rage, while Mike got up and backed up into a corner. One of our other friends, Sarah, cuts Mike's weak apology off immediately. She yells, what the hell, Mike? Her voice is filled with anger and disbelief. Others begin chiming in, demanding explanations and expressing their disappointment in both Amanda and Mike. The atmosphere has gone from lighthearted to extremely heavy in an instant. Amanda comes back into the edge of the room, still crying profusely, trying to apologize to me. She says she never meant for this to happen and that it was a mistake, but I didn't want to hear it. I told her that she's made her bed, and now she has to lie in it, and that she needs to pack some shit and leave the house. Mike, looking like he wants to disappear, tries to slink out of the room. Our friends stop him, though, and tell him he's not going anywhere. They too knew that he needed to face the consequences of his actions, too. The rest of the night is a blur of anger, tears, and awkward silence. Some people leave, not wanting to be a part of the drama, while most of the others stay to try to mediate the situation. Several times the ones who stayed had to keep me from pounding Mike's stupid face. I appreciated their efforts, but I knew there's no fixing this. The damage had been done. There was no resolution. How could there be? So eventually, everyone leaves. Amanda and I are left standing in the wreckage of our once happy home. I tell her I need some time alone to think, and she leaves to stay with her sister. Over the next few days, I receive countless messages and calls from friends and family offering their support. They're shocked and disappointed in Amanda and Mike, and many of them cut ties with them entirely. I'm grateful for the support, but it doesn't change the fact that my life has been turned upside down. Mike tries to call and apologize, but I don't answer. I can't bring myself to speak to him. The betrayal is too deep. I've lost both my wife and my best friend, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to forgive either of them. As for Amanda, I told her I wanted to separate. We're not officially divorced yet, but it's just a matter of time until I finish the paperwork and send it over to her. The trust between us has been shattered, and that cannot ever be repaired. I wish I could say I feel better after exposing her betrayal, but the truth is, it just hurts. So, that's my story. I never thought I'd be the one sharing a crazy never have I ever story on Reddit, but life has a funny way of surprising you. I guess the moral of the story is to always trust your instincts and never be afraid to stand up for yourself, even when it means facing the ugly truth. If you've made it this far, thanks for reading. I hope my experience can serve as a cautionary tale or at least provide some entertainment. Just remember, life goes on, and we all deserve happiness, even if the journey there can be a bit messy sometimes. Well, it wasn't a billboard and no one got fired, but it sounds like Amanda and Mike are going to have a tough time while they have to find new friends. So was it enough? What would you have done differently? Let us know in the comments section below. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell. Click here for more Tangled Threats.